Hi guys, welcome to this video. Unity recently updated the XR Interaction Toolkit package, and one of the main changes in that package is that it now uses an action-based system as opposed to a device-based system, which is what we've been using to date. And that action-based system really is looking at using the new input system for Unity. And I think you guys are ready. I think we're ready to take the next step in our XR journey. Let's dive right in. So here we go, we're in our editor. This is just using a standard version of Unity, but we are using version of Unity 2020.1.13F1. So it is a recent version of Unity. And first of all, we're gonna get everything set up. So we're gonna to go to our file build settings. I'm gonna be using the Oculus Quest for this. So I'm gonna to need to be on the Android platform. I'm just gonna change my text to compression to ASTC and switch platform. Awesome, when that's done, we'll go ahead and click on our player settings. And we're gonna get, I'm gonna, you're gonna get a window probably pop up somewhere in, in anywhere in your screen, but you can dock it and put it on the right hand side like mine. And under our player, there's just a couple of things we wanna change. Under the minimum API level, I'm going to change it from API level 19 to API level 23. And that's that for that section. And then down under XR plugin management, go ahead and click on that one. We'll go ahead and install the XR plugin management. And when that's imported, I'm going to go ahead and check Oculus because I'm using the Quest. It's going to do some more importing. And then you'll see under the XR plugin management, it just drops in Oculus there. And just make sure you're on. Stereo rendering mode, multi-pass, and V2 signing is ticked, and I've got some other ticks there as well. So that's that section all set up and ready to go. Now we just need to add in our XR Interaction Toolkit package. And to do that, we'll close down the build settings window, and we're going to open the package manager by going to Window, Package Manager. And you get this window here pop up. And by default, I think you'll be in the in-project packages, which you'll only see a few in the list. We need to actually um, see the Unity registries is all currently available packages. Um, but you'll notice the XR Interaction Toolkit isn't here. And by in Unity 2019, you had to click up here and go show preview packages. So that doesn't exist anymore. In 2020, you had to click on the cog, go to advanced project settings, and make sure enable preview packages are ticked. And then you're going to see our package manager updates to show us all the preview packages. And we just want to go ahead and scroll down the list. We can search and we're looking for the XR Interaction Toolkit. And the current version here is version 0.1, and that's the one we want. And we're gonna go ahead and install this package. You know, then you're gonna get a warning probably pop up saying this project is using the new input system package, but the native platform backends the new input system are not enabled in the player settings. This means that no input from native devices will come through. And um, we're gonna be using the new input system for all the tutorials moving forward because we're just awesome now at Unity and having done my previous tutorials, I think you're ready for that next part of the journey. We're gonna use the new input system. We're gonna go ahead and, and hit yes. We're gonna get some more loading going on and then the editor is gonna restart. Once the editor restarts, we'll be brought back to your package manager window where we left it. And just for a minute, I just want to show you something on the XI Interaction Toolkit. We now have these samples and one of them is going to be the default input actions, and one of them is the XR device simulator. Now, we won't do this yet, but in a second we're going to go ahead and, and import these, and then uh, we're not going to do it yet because I want to show you why we need them. So we're going to go ahead and close the package manager down, and now we we have our scene here. All I've got is a, a ground plane. This is my logo on here, uh, and I've got the main camera and a directional light. So we don't need our main camera because we going to be dropping in an XR rig in a second and to do that we're going to right click in our hierarchy go down to XR now you're going to see a couple of things that have changed here we've got all um, our room scale and stationary XR rig and locomotion system as before but the only difference is these are action based um, previously in all the other tutorials we've been doing we've been using the device based so using the old input system and unity is slowly phasing this out so whilst it'll still work now probably good to get on board the train and um, figure out how we use the new input system. So we're going to go ahead and create a room scale XR rig, which is an action based one. And we're just going to go ahead and make sure it's centered at zero, click on the three dots and go to reset position. Now if we go ahead and extend the XR rig and the camera off there, you'll see we have our main camera as before. And it's got a track pose driver, which is tracking the headset. The main differences you're going to see here is on the controllers. So on the left and right hand controller, either one, doesn't matter. You're going to see the XR controller 
action-based script. And this script has um, some input, so enable input actions to make sure that's ticked. And if we were to go ahead and say use reference for any one of these, we can go ahead and input our own input action reference, a scriptable object that tells you what, how this thing should act. We don't want to be creating these ourselves, because that'll take ages and we just haven't got the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Window, we're going to bring up our Package Manager again, uh, and under the um, Samples, if you don't see it, click it, and you'll see Default Input Actions. We're going to go ahead and bring these in, and this is going to help us populate all these with some presets. We're going to go ahead and click on Import. This won't take very long at all, and you can see it's gone straight in there. Close that down. You can see here we've got now a list of default input actions, um, going from Continuous Move, Continuous Turn, and Default Input Actions, and um, defaults for the left and right controller and snap tone. So how do we set these up so that our XR rig comes in populated with all this ready to go? Let's take a look. We're going to go ahead and delete our XR rig and go down to where we just imported our default input actions uh, and click on the XRI default interactions and it's going to bring up um, the new input system, the Unity. Uh, and this is all set up ready for us to go. Everything's been done for us. And you can see we can scroll down and we can look at the action maps. So for something like the XRI right hand, you can see it's got all the actions possible we can do. Rotation, position, select, turn. Um, so if we have a look at these, we can drop down using the arrow. So to use the activate function on the controller, it's got a, a mapped trigger press, the right XR hand controller, and it shows you the binding. And what's really powerful with this new input system is that we can go ahead and add a new binding. We can just go add binding. Give it a path, um, which is going to be an XR controller in our case. And let's say we wanted to use the Oculus Touch controller specifically, and we wanted to use its primary button. Well, then that will map now to the activate. We don't want to actually do this. We don't, I don't want to break anything. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Um, that just gives you a quick overview of how this default XR I interactions is set up. I'm going to go ahead and close this window for a minute. Then if you go ahead and click on the XRI default and left controller and default right controller, you can see here what we saw a minute ago in our XR rig. Apart from now, all the references have been assigned correctly. This is all set up and ready for us to go. We need to set this as our, kind of like our default setting. And to do that, we can go to add to action based controller default at the top. Go ahead and click on that for the left. And we'll do the same for the right. And that's almost ready to go. There's just one more thing. Make sure you've got your project settings window open. Uh, I'm going to drag it out so it's a little easier for us to see here. There you go. Now, after we've clicked those boxes, if we go down to the preset manager, you can see here it's got our XRI default right controller and our XRI default left controller. These are linking back, you can see. We need to give these a couple of names just to complete the process. So we'll go ahead in the filter and we'll type in right for the right controller and left for the left controller. Hit enter. And we can close that down. And now when we go to create our XR rig, down to XR, room scale XR rig, action based. On our controllers, we'll see now that everything is populated correctly. There's one final thing we need to do to link this all together. We go to the root of our XR rig, we go to add component, and we want to type input. So we can then see the input action manager. So we're looking for the input action manager, which is just here. Go ahead and drop it on. And then you're going to see a field here for action assets. Change the zero to a one. And it's going to ask for an input action asset. Well, we've brought that in with the samples. So we can click on the button and go XRI default input actions. Click on that and it's going to assign it to the field. So that's everything. This We should be able to build this now and it'll work. Um, and this is great because we're now we're using the new input system for Unity. We're no longer reliant on the, um, the old input system, which could potentially um, be dropped at any time and deprecated. Um, and this makes us future-proof. So using this new input action manager is going to allow us to create actions which are a lot more agnostic into where the input is coming from. So I'm now going ahead and build this and let's have a look. So here we are, we're in our scene. Everything's working great. I can look around with my headset and I can also use my controls. You can see them being tracked because you can see the XRA interactors shooting out into the distance. So this has been 
uh, a good exercise to do. We're now using the new input system for our controls. So we're staying current with, with what Unity is doing. Wow, we've actually done a ton of stuff in this video. We've updated the XR Interaction Toolkit to the new version. We've used the new input system to set up detecting input on our devices. And we've also used the action-based um, XR rigs for use in our project. I think as, as time goes on, Unity is slowly going to phase out the old input system so that it's good that we're ahead of the curve and ready to go for the next part of our tutorial. See you in the next one.